It is just so common when some of the candidates we work with tell me, hey, Michael, I just spent the whole of last night doing hundreds of math problems. My math is great. Let's begin. And when I hear this, I always smile a little bit because if your math is bad, relatively speaking bad, and you've done 100 problems in one night, your math hasn't become better. You may think it's become better. You may have been told it would become better, but it hasn't. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Firstly, what many people do is they, when they hear that they need to be good at math in a consulting case interview, they assume it's about speed. And what they do is they try to become fast at doing calculations. So they go onto these websites, there's a lot of them out there, that help you practice your math and they help you become much faster at it. The other thing people tend to hear when they, uh, they're bad at math is they always tell me, hey, Michael, you know, my math's okay. I just get confused with ones and zeros. Really? The zeros is what gets you? Everyone tells me that. And when I do a case with them, I can assure you it's more than what the zeros that would get you. I'll tell you what will get you. Fractions kills many people. Solving for X, wow. You'd be shocked at how many people do not know how to solve for X. Or if they know how to solve for X, in the stress of a case situation, they just fumble it up. Unit conversion, now that's the one, that's the silent killer of consulting case interviews. Most people don't carry units when they do calculations, especially when they do it in their head. So when they need to do a unit conversion, they get totally lost. I want people to understand this very clearly, so I'm going to say it very clearly. When you are told you need to become better at math, it is not about speed only. It's not about getting the zeros right when you multiply and divide. Please understand that. Sure, most people need help there, but if you fix those two things, you have other problems you introduce. For example, if you learn to do math in the wrong way, no matter how much you practice, you actually make the situation worse, and this is why. If you're doing math in the wrong way and you do 100 problems the wrong way, all you've done is you've actually taught yourself to do math the wrong way, or you've reinforced it. So it's very important that you understand the difference between efficiency and effectiveness. Yes, you have to be fast, but not so fast that you leave everyone behind. You have to be, let's just put this way, you have to be quick. But do not spend the bulk of your time and effort trying to be as fast as you possibly can. Be quick, but that is it. In fact, I think most candidates spend too much time trying to be too fast. Beyond being efficient, you have to be effective. You have to know how to solve math problems. If you're weak at math, it's not speed. It's just so bizarre to me. And when people say they're weak at math, they automatically think because they can't solve problems fast enough. But when most people are bad at math, it's because they don't know how to solve problems or the techniques they've learned are very inefficient or take too long or just plain wrong. So when you want to practice math for consulting case interviews, there are other techniques you need to follow. We'll discuss them later, but I do want you to get this point that you need to be fast, but you also have to be effective. And effective is the way you study. So don't just go through thousands of problems every day and say you're practicing math. Make sure you get to the root of the problem, which is whether you're using the right technique to solve problems. Beyond this, there's another reason why people struggle with math, and that is because they are invariably very unstructured. What do I mean by unstructured? Let's say I give you something to calculate, like work out the amount, estimate in your head, estimate for me the uh, number of servers that Facebook has just to store photographs online. Well, the way you would have to do this is you have to say population of the world multiplied by the percentage you have internet access, multiplied by the percentage you have social media accounts, Multiply by the percentage you have Facebook accounts. Multiply by the percentage you have active Facebook accounts. Multiply by the percentage we load photos. Multiply by the number of photos they upload or download per week. Multiplied by the number of weeks in a year. Multiply by the number of photos they upload. That'll tell you the amount of space you need. However, the download also takes up space, so you need to work that out as well. Then that'll give you the total amount of space and bandwidth you need. But you also need backup. So whatever number you have here, you determine how much backup Facebook has. Do they have backup three times, four times? Do they backup their servers five times? Then you have to multiply that by five. Then you have to work out the cost of the servers. Now, what some people do is they will do this in their head. Assuming they've actually figured out everything, they'll do it in their head. And what I always recommend people is to do is that once you know how to do math and you are fast, the other challenge is structuring your calculations in such a way that you do not get mixed up. 
And I've met people who are really fast with math in their head, but then they just structure it on a piece of paper in such a haphazard way that they get lost. So beyond being able to do it mentally, most of the problems you will face in a consulting interview are layered. In the sense you cannot solve it in your head together, you will need to write it out in a piece of paper. When you write out things on a piece of paper, make sure that piece of paper is there to help you and not hinder you. What do I mean by that? Well, many people, when you see what they write, let's assume we've done the case, we've been doing the case now for four minutes. After four minutes, if you look at what they've written, that candidate cannot use that sheet of paper to guide them. They've written things in a haphazard way, unstructured, scribbles all over the place, so that when they look at the piece of paper, it's not guiding them, it's not helping them, it's actually a hindrance. When you write in a piece of paper, it must be written in such a structured way that when you get lost four minutes down the line, you can, should be able to go back and look at the piece of paper to guide you. It's very difficult to explain how to structure your math problems in a piece of paper. That's a very important point because when you leave the case and your documents are clicked and they look at the way you structure things on a piece of paper, they would want to see that you are a structured thinker. But beyond that, I mean, you need to know how to do fractions, calculations, unit conversions, percentages, and so on. It's not just rounding up zeros that will hurt you and speed. They are the least of your problems. In fact, if you look at the level of difficulty of arithmetic in a consulting case, there are three levels. First one is a basic estimation case. And for those of you who are wondering what a basic estimation case, the Facebook example I discussed earlier is actually a basic estimation case. It's not even a complex estimation case. What many interviewers do is they would ask you the basic estimation case. Once you give the answer, they would change some of the variables. They would tell you something like, well, assume that Facebook signed on only 10% more users this year, 20% from last year closed the accounts. Assume that the price of servers went up 10%. But all the servers are being bought from Japan, and the U.S. currency has depreciated 3% against the Japanese currency. Now calculate the value of the servers. This is called a changing estimation question. It's very common, whereby they're going to change some of the assumptions you used and ask you to recalculate the answer. It is very common. Obviously, a bit more difficult. But if you use that piece of paper to structure your questions out correctly, and when I say structure it correctly, the way I would have done the Facebook case is at the top. I'd have determined what kind of problem this is. Then I'd have wrote down an equation, the one I talked about, population of the world multiplied by the percentage of people who have social media accounts and internet access and so on. Written down the equation only in words, or shorthand anyway. One level below that, I'd have written out just the numbers, the assumptions for each of those parts of the equation. So population of the world, 7 billion, and so on. Then one level below that, I would have written out the calculations. This way, if I was ever went off, I could always go back and say, was my calculations wrong? Were my assumptions wrong? Was my equation wrong? It had to be one of the three things. If none of them are wrong, then I must be right. The other type of difficult application of a math problem is in a real case whereby, let's say, you have to work out whether Burberry should open a store in Mongolia. That's a full case, you know, where you have to spend 20 minutes solving it. But Within the case, you have to do calculations, and maybe the interviewer would ask you to size the market for luxury brands in Mongolia, and there's a basic estimation case. And what many candidates do is they get stuck when they face an estimation case within a broader case. They actually can't see it's an estimation case, so they're just under the pressure of solving a broader case. It affects the ability to do arithmetic. Now, if you really wanted to prepare for math in a case, this is what I would recommend you do. If you do not have a math background, get a high school math textbook and read it. Obviously, stay away from the trigonometry and geometry and so on, but stick to the algebra and stick and learn the shortcuts. That's what you should focus on. I don't want you to read the textbook to understand math. I want you to learn the shortcuts, and most people don't know the shortcuts. They apply very long techniques to solve problems. Learn the shortcuts. That's what you should do. Because once you know the shortcuts and you know the right way to solve it, then it's the process of a repetition to become faster. The other thing you may want to do is go to mba.com and download the GMAT software. Focus on the practice questions only on the arithmetic side. Ignore the geometry questions and so on. You'd be surprised how well it prepares you because these are not simple math questions. They're fairly complicated. And they expect you to be able to solve these things. Now, Obviously, there's a lot of questions in that software that is going to be irrelevant, but there's a lot that is relevant. 
especially if you're going to write the McKinsey PST. That software could be very useful for preparing you. So just to recap, multiplying and dividing zeros are not your problems. Trust me. Units, percentages, fractions, and solving for X are your problems. Speed is irrelevant if you are simply perfecting a bad technique. Go back and look at your technique. Read high school math textbooks to do that. If you have the right technique and you are fast, the way you structure your thoughts on a piece of paper is important. Make sure you know how to do that. Make sure your piece of paper is actually an asset to you in a case and not something that trips you up. Once you know all of these things and have perfected this, then understand how arithmetic is used in a consulting case. There are three levels of difficulty. A basic estimation case, an estimation case where the variables or the assumptions are changed, and finally, the application of an estimation case within a broader case. I must be honest with you. I mean, I've never really considered math my strong suit. I am good at it. But I was never someone who had all these math calculations at the back of my head. But I was a very logical thinker. And I could solve things through shortcuts, which I developed myself. The key thing is to get to a good answer. Not a correct answer. A good answer is fine. As quickly as possible. And having the right techniques allows you to introduce shortcuts which allows you to cut off time. But if you don't know the shortcuts and you do face the problem directly, no matter how fast you are, you're not going to make it. So please spend enough time to practice math, but do it correctly. Understand if your problem is speed or just not knowing the correct ways to solve it. And fix those issues. Multiplying 100 by 1 million is not your issue. Please understand that. Finally, as always, if there are any questions or comments, please feel free to send them to me and I'll be happy to follow up with a podcast. Thank you.